Hello, my friends. Welcome to this energetic healing session for promoting sleep hygiene. So I'm going to be sharing a few different ways to kind of combat insomnia, restlessness, maybe you're waking up in the middle of the night, just some things to help support you if you're moving through any of that. We're going to start with a little bit of clearing using this beautiful woven fan. It's a really stormy night. We had a really big snowstorm. Now it's just like howling wind. <laughs> But, you know, that can help us when we're trying to get into this sleep zone. So I did that hibernation session recently, and that was a great session for just giving yourself permission to kind of hibernate. And this is really about feeling that energy of the cave. I want you to really give over to that dark, kind of soothing energy. And in that session, I did it in the Reiki room where it has more of like a cream kind of background, but I wanted to create something that had more of that cavernous feeling where you felt tucked inside of our little cave here. And so I'm going to light a little bit of this incense off of our candle. How are you feeling? Okay, well, I hope that by the end of the session, ooh, as always, you feel at least 10% better, okay? It's a deal. So let's start with a little bit of clearing. I just wanted to pop in here really quick, sorry for interrupting your video, and just let you know that I do have a few spots left open for Reiki Level 1 students if you're interested in becoming my student. So I will leave all that linked below, but once those spots are filled, the course will be closed. It's all virtual, starts on March 8th, and there will be live streams throughout, which if you can't make a live stream, then you get sent the link and it's totally fine. So people from all over the world can join. But I did want to mention that because a few of you have had some questions. All right, I'll let you get back to the video, but I'll leave that link below. Okay. Bye. And working with that kind of energy healing and healing yourself can be amazing for helping with the sleep hygiene. Yeah, I just always want to thank you. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to work with you. So this is a holy basil incense, and we're just using this to just clear your energetic field. Once again, we have this beautiful, soft blanket. The softest blanket <laughs> ever. It's so freaking soft. Soft and yummy. Okay. Good. So we're just clearing anything from the day. So one way that you can help yourself when it comes to sleep hygiene is just consistency. Consistency is really key here. So you can reset that internal clock by falling asleep and rising around the same time every day. It's just a nice way to just kind of set your circadian rhythm. My cousin has done like incredible work in the medical field 
on circadian rhythms and she's been like published. She's such an, so smart. But yeah, I mean, that consistency is really important. And then you also want to optimize your environment. That's why this cave is so helpful. Creating a cave, you know, think about a cave. Dark, very dark. Cool. You know, if, if it's too dry, then you'll feel dehydrated. You'll need to drink lots of water and then you might need to take frequent trips to the bathroom, so optimizing your sleep environment is really is important. Caves are quiet and cool. Like we said, nice and dark. Okay, so I'm just going to Draw the sacred symbols now. I'm going to spray a little bit of this Ormus. This is lavender. A really soothing lavender and some moon spray. So. I've been really digging, keeping it nice and simple with just a little bit of that lavender mist. Lately, it's so nice. smell is so nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Oh, if only we had smell vision <laughs> So, you know, in terms of the environment that you're creating, using like a, a spray, like lavender, something super calming, is wonderful for just supporting you in that cavernous environment. You can have something like a humidifier with some nice food grade essential oils, like really nice pure essential oils. That can be really powerful and really, really nice. You could use, you know, I mean, making sure that you have a nice, really wonderful mattress. I am sponsored by a mattress. I've been sponsored by a mattress company, so I'm not going to say who it is, but like, I've talked about this in previous videos. Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you. Like, having an amazing mattress is like, it's like, it's like a, it's like game changing. If you haven't, if you don't know who I'm, what I'm talking about, just go and check out my previous videos. <laughs> um, maybe I'll link them or something like that. Again, this is not sponsored at all, which is why I don't want to say the brand because of those rules, but like having an amazing mattress, oh, so good, so key. And like, if you can set, if you know how you like to sleep and if you wake up at certain times or whatever, that's what happens to me. But if you have that situation, oh, 
body. Then setting your thermostat for cooler in the middle of the night can be really helpful. I found that to be really, really helpful just to keep it nice and cool at bedtime. And if you can, I can't do this, but if you can set your um, thermostat to maybe get a little bit cooler at a certain time, that's really, really helpful. So yeah, these are wonderful ways of just creating that really like soothing, comforting, sleep-inducing environment for you. Good smells, yummy smells. Nice temperature. Soothing energy. The other thing you can do is you can develop a really calming nighttime routine before you go to bed. So this could include activities like reading a really cozy book, practicing relaxation. You know, we did some breath work, but you could really do some of that beautiful breath work before bed. You could drink some tea, some chamomile tea after dinner. Engage in a little bit of meditation. That can be really nice. If you find yourself getting into intense conversations before bed, if you find yourself, you know, maybe you and your partner argue before bed, I would really suggest that you come up with a way or a boundary where it's like, this sort of, like you could do like the bedroom boundary where we, before bed, we just, we don't engage in that. Sometimes it's, you know, you can't always do that because sometimes it is easier and more beneficial to sort of like resolve the conflict before you go to sleep. But if at all possible, try to have those conversations, first of all, when you're more alert and awake so you can be really present for them. Then beyond that, try to have those conversations early enough in the day to where they're not disrupting your sleep. I think that can be really helpful. When you're choosing a book to read, I think this is super important. It's something I've been practicing for a while. So when you're choosing that book, I would suggest that you go for a really relaxing book. So I have a few books that I'm, you know, have on the go usually always like a really calming narrative fiction so just something that's really peaceful last year i reread all the um the lord of the rings and the hobbit before bed which i guess <laughs> those are kind of epic but they're they're very like peaceful and nostalgic to me my dad read them to me when i was a kid and like they're just they have like nostalgia quality to them for me and i find them very relaxing uh Jane Austen would be a great one to read before bed unless you're going through some tough times in your love life but even then you know they're pretty funny books yeah just choose books that are calming to read before bed and maybe those more entertaining books that are that are going to be more activating maybe read those at some other time on your lunch break or something like that but I usually have a nonfiction that I read. I'm usually reading a couple of nonfiction, so usually some kind of spiritual or self-help based book I'll be reading. Right now I'm reading Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Cannot recommend it enough. And then I usually have a gardening book that I'm reading as well. So those are the three books that I usually read. And yeah, having those before bed is really helpful for me so that I have one for each kind of thing and I I don't know just for me that system feels really nice and supportive and even if I'm only reading for like half an hour before bed it's still really nice just to have that that time away from screens away from anything super active just like getting into that very zen mind, mindset calming that mental chatter so with that in mind, exposure to screens, we just want to be really mindful of that. So 
you know, it's, we've talked about this before, but it's suggested to have like at least an hour before bedtime to just turn those off just because the blue light that's emitted can tend to interfere, disrupt some of the sleep hormones so that we, our body naturally produces like melatonin and things like that. I'm going to use this angel light now just to really soothe your energy so one thing i would suggest for adequate sleep hygiene is to maybe just try to remove certain crystals from your bedroom so if you're super into crystals and you love esoteric tools I don't really have a problem with that, with this. In fact, I think like selenite has that qual- the lunar quality, so it kind of connects me more to the moon and, and nighttime. But having selenite in your bedroom could be a crystal that you maybe want to remove. It can be associated with feeling a little bit more activated. I would definitely remove something like a clear quartz crystal, even though it's very purifying. Clear quartz can be very activating and it can amplify energies so be really mindful of that any really intense crystals indigo gabbro i would definitely leave that outside of the bedroom um malachite it's a heart-based home but it can be very very intense um tourmaline i would probably leave outside of the bedroom unless you're clearing it regularly because you know that's like an energy vacuum so it could hold on to those energies so yeah, just be really mindful of what stones you're keeping in your bedroom. These are the ones that I would personally recommend if you are going to have stones in your bedroom. I think these are the kind of go-tos that I would suggest. Angelite, super soothing. If I'm having trouble sleeping, just placing that on my nightstand, on my bedside table. Like, you know, this little plinth, this little like statue, sculpture. It's so pretty, I love the raw edges, but it's it's such a beautiful stone. It's so peaceful and so soothing. It's just so nice. So I'm gonna use this to kind of clear and cleanse your energy. Clearing any mental chatter here. And I would recommend that you're just aware of what you're consuming before going to bed. So like if you have a really large meal and then you go to bed immediately afterwards, that isn't great for sleep hygiene because that can keep you awake as your body's digesting that. I'd give it a little bit of time. <laughs> Obviously things like caffeine and nicotine, having those super close to bedtime, those can disrupt your sleep as well. Just clearing the mental chatter, just allowing this beautiful, like, soothing stone to clear any of that mental chatter, using it like, like a flag, just allowing this energy to be wafted away, blown away in the breeze. If you're working out, I mean, movement and, and regular physical activity is amazing for helping you regulate your sleep, but if you're working out too close to bedtime, then it can actually have the opposite effect and that can really disrupt your, your sleep hygiene because it can convince your body that it's earlier in the day. So try to give it a few hours just to promote better sleep. God, I'm going to place this here so it's just facing you and please Oh my gosh, please feel free to drift off at any point. I think that celestite is another great one. It's a great stone just for promoting sleep. It's it's so druzy and calming. Yeah, it's a lovely stone. Celestite. I spoke about all the qualities of celestite in my crystal healing video. I just chose a few crystals and did one of those. But I'm going to move this through your aura. So if you wanted to have a cell site in your bedroom, 
that's perfectly fine. A lot of more, even though this is tran more translucent, because it's a lot of the more opaque crystals are really great for sleep, as well as blue stones. Blue stones can be really helpful for sleep. Mm, this Stress re reduction is really important before bed, just to help you really connect with that sleep hygiene, with really getting into the right mindset for sleep. So techniques like meditation, you know, breathing exercises, and you can even imagine as you do this deep breathing that you're taking in calm and you're releasing anxiety just so that you have this sense of connection to the breath and what it's doing. Progressive muscle relaxation is amazing. That's where you, you know, start at your feet could slowly relax your toes. Then let the relaxation drizzle like honey down your foot, down your ankle, filling you with warm, warm healing light. Relaxing your ankles, now your calves and your shins. Moving up. It drizzles up to your knees, relaxing. And now you can feel the weight of your body on this Reiki table or on your comfortable mattress. And then you can feel it moving up, drizzling up, warm, thick soothing up into the bowl at the base of your torso so now you feel the weight of your legs your knees your shins calves heels ankles toes your hips and now your belly your low belly soothing and relaxing soothing and relaxing drizzling up drizzling the honey into the upper belly, into the solar plexus. Soothing and calming the solar plexus is such an activating space. Soothing and calming in that area. Then moving up, moving up into the heart space. Soothing and calming in the heart space. Then drizzling that honey up. Drizzling it up to the shoulders. Take the weight of the day off. Just taking the weight of the day off. Then moving up to the throat, releasing any pressure, any tension in the throat space. Reiki and Reiki treatments are so amazing for releasing tension. Releasing any tension in the jaw, the mouth, the face. Releasing tension in the brow, the eyes. See if you can relax your eyes. Imagine that everything just becomes heavy. Your eyelids grow heavy. Heavy, heavy. Brow releases all of that tension, melting away like ice to water. And then the top of your head release and relax. Your hair, all the strands of your hair just release and relax. Now the tip of your head down to your toes, fully relaxed. Now onto the you are going to get one stone for sleep, I would suggest this one. This is how light. This creamy white stone, beautiful, little, like webs of kind of silver or gray throughout. It's such a calming stone. This is probably my number one. I always have a piece of how light by my, by my bed. I love using it. You could put it underneath your pillow. I toss and turn too much for that. I've tried it though. But especially if you have like a polished stone, I have a polished highlight and I keep that down there and then that's why I got this down for our session so that I could keep that one down there because I have it every night. But 
So we have this progressive muscle relaxation. Hopefully now your, your mind feels calm and you've calmed your body and your mind before sleeping. So we mentioned mindfulness practices, but you could really practice meditating. You could use my book, Self Love to Month of Meditations. I think I have it somewhere around here. I think I am going to do a, um, an audiobook version of it to help you when you're falling asleep. There we go. Here it is. You could try meditating before sleep, and if you're meditating before sleep, reading something like that, reading something so that you're not on a screen, can be helpful because sometimes the blue light from the screens can impact our circadian rhythm as well. Convinces us that it's time to be up, time to be awake. You can also turn your screen on to more of a warm tone. This is my book. Uh, you could practice journaling by brain dumping. That's really helpful. Particularly, you know, if you are going through something really stressful, you know, maybe like we were talking about your you're arguing with your partner or something like that. Brain dumping can be really helpful for that because you can just kind of get it all out. Sometimes we just need that release. That can be helpful. You could try cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT to help manage some of these stressors. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps us to shift our behaviors so you can work with someone who understands your behaviors and then help you shift those around sleep. Another aspect that's really helpful is just association. So associating your bedroom with sleep, you know, that's really helpful. So if you're doing things like, uh, I mean, it's, some, it's sometimes difficult because you're, you know, maybe you have a roommate and so you spend a lot of time in your bedroom just hanging out. But if you can, try to have a different area of your bed, maybe, if that's the case, but try to keep your bedroom reserved for like relaxing, soothing activities and the bed specifically for sleeping because that way you're associating every time your mind, you know, every time you go into your, into your bedroom, your mind associates that with sleep. And the other aspect is, you know, if you're lying awake and you're really stressed out, maybe you're continuing to look at the clock. Every few minutes you're, you're checking if you've gotten any extra sleep and you're, that association between sleep and stress, that's, that's when we want to break and we kind of want to call that habit so i don't have a clock in my bedroom um i like to uh, if i need to set an alarm i put it in another room and just turn it up loud so that i have to get up but a lot of the times it just the, the morning light wakes me up or my dog <laughs> usually there are some suggestions that if you have a hard time falling asleep for about 20 minutes, then just get up and do something, you know, relaxing until you feel tired because you can start to feel that frustration and restlessness. And when you're constantly checking the time, it can increase the stress and then make it harder for some of the sleep hormone you know, for melatonin to be produced. So tuck your, your clock away, you know, or just you can put it in the drawer, put it in a different room, just so you're really promoting positive sleep habits. And there are also, I'm sure, different alarm clocks. I think there's one that has, that's just you can wake up to the light so it's like slowly gets lighter and that way it sort of mimics the sunrise 
apparently that's helpful so if you're really struggling with that and you're you see that you're constantly checking what time it is and you're getting so frustrated oh it's only been five minutes or oh it's been 20 minutes and i'm still awake or whatever it is however that manifests itself for you maybe try to really invest in something that's going to help you because once you get your sleep in order <sighs> so passionate about this every other part of your life will improve <laughs> mood, health, you know, focus, mental dexterity, clarity, your relationships will get better, you'll be more patient, you'll be more present, and I think presence is the most important thing in the world, I think presence is just so important in our relationships with ourselves, with our work, with engaging in the world, presence is just like key, top of the charts, so when we get that sleep that's when all of these things can unfold for us so it's so important and impactful and so helpful to just prioritize it so do what you can to prioritize it so another thing that can be really helpful is to limit your intake of liquid before bed you know i mentioned drinking tea try to drink that um, a few hours before bed maybe right after dinner or something like that so you give yourself time when you're having to take trips to the bathroom frequently throughout the night that can really disrupt things and what happens for me is once i wake up it's hard for me to fall back asleep so it's when i fall asleep initially that's okay, but I know a lot of you struggle with this as well. It's the waking up and then not being able to fall back to sleep. So if you can limit that, that's going to be super helpful. You don't want to go to bed too dehydrated, but you also don't want to feel like you have to go to the bathroom constantly throughout the night. So just try to find that balance. And again, try to, you know, let your awareness on this and really bring intentionality to your sleep hygiene. I promise you, if you bring that intentionality to it, you'll start to heal. I'm going to strike this 528 hertz tuning fork and we're just going to send this very calming frequency throughout your vibrations. Loving, calming, promote serenity. You could clear your energy before bed with a tuning fork. And lastly, I just want you to be really kind to yourself. So if you're really struggling with sleep, you're already kind of a raw nerve. You're already this like ball of tightly wound energy and you just need to just give yourself some grace. Try to prioritize this so you can feel better. But really be kind to yourself because you don't want to add any more frustration or anxiety or stress onto yourself as much as you can just try to be really nice to yourself okay like this soy blend wick candle wick wellness candle On behalf of your highest, wisest, most empowered, most aligned self, in loving comfort and perfect balance, I wish to conduct this Reiki session for helping you sleep, for improving your sleep hygiene, and just helping you feel better. 
If you would like to set your own intention based on whatever you're moving through right now, feel free to use this flame to do so now. little owl rattle. Just cleansing anything that's lingering from the day or the night. And you're all tucked in and ready to go to sleep. Beautiful night's sleep, and I want that for you. Rest is very productive, and sleep is very productive, okay? So if there's any part of you that feels guilty, just know that it's one of the best things that you can do for yourself. The most supportive, and also the most productive things that you can do for yourself is, is rest. All of these internal processes occur when we sleep, so... You are expressive, you are loved, you are strong, you are creative, you are emotionally balanced, you are safe. Safe, secure, tucked up inside of this really cozy cave. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know how you found this, if this was helpful to you. Maybe you had some insights while we were conducting this session. I hope you found it really supportive, and I'm sending you so much love on your journey. Have a beautiful rest of your day or your night. Take really good care of yourself and take good care of each other. See you again Sundays and Wednesdays. So until then, be so, so well. <laughs>